My most memorable case was a homicide case with a strange sequence of events, some unexpected lab results, and an unusual twist at the end. I did not go to the crime scene myself, but as a typical case, a crime occurs, a detective is called to the scene, and evidence is collected. In this case, a woman was sexually assaulted and killed, and her body was wrapped in a cloth, set on fire, and she was incinerated, and this happened behind a fitness center. At the crime scene, evidence items were collected, including blood from inside the fitness center. After the suspect was arrested, there was a blood stain on his shirt that was collected, and then vaginal swabs were collected at autopsy from the victim, and these were all submitted to the laboratory for analysis. After questioning witnesses at the scene, the detectives developed a suspect, and in questioning him, they found out that he was actually an employee of the fitness center. He lived in an air handler up on the roof, and he was the one that actually made the 911 call reporting the fire behind the building. One of the surprising findings in this case was from the medical examiner's office when they actually were able to collect from this incinerated body vaginal swabs from a sexual assault, and I was able to analyze those for forensic evidence and determine DNA profiles from those samples. As part of my forensic analysis in the laboratory, I looked under the microscope and found sperm cells on the vaginal swabs. Samples were collected from the victim herself to find out her DNA profile, and a suspect sample was collected from him, indicating what his DNA profile was. In this case, the DNA profile from the vaginal swabs matched a mixture of both the victim and the suspect, and the DNA profiles from the fitness center and from the suspect's shirt matched the DNA profile from the victim. The unusual twist in this case came when the suspect was confronted with the physical evidence he admitted to committing this crime. There was an unsolved crime with similar circumstances from two years earlier, and this suspect admitted to committing that crime as well. So from the evidence collected in this case, two cases were able to be solved. Due to the condition of the victim's body, I did not expect to find conclusive DNA results in this case. But in 20 years of forensic DNA analysis, I have learned to expect the unexpected.